and by 12 years old, John started to play the organ. By 13, he became an organist in his father's church. His formal training began at the Arizona State University and Whittier College. Because he enjoyed service playing so much, he has been a church organist for over 47 years and has held organist and director of music positions in several major churches. He has given concerts, recitals, seminars, clinics, and workshops in many parts of the world. His particular specialties are enabling congregational hymn singing and improvising on familiar hymn tunes. John is currently the manager of international sales with Rogers Instrument, which is a brand of a new organ, and his schedule keeps him traveling about 50% of the time to destinations around the world. He still finds time to be a church organist, and at present holds forth in a large pipe organ at the Rose City Park United Methodist Church in Portland, Oregon, at a position he has held for the past seven years. So John, we're ever so honored to have you with us this morning, and to show, and to show our gratitude, we would like to present a small token of appreciation to you. Thank you once again. Thank you, John Green. Thank you for flying all the way here. He just arrived at midnight. So, you know, but he is such a professional and he's so willing to come and inspire us with music. And there's another feature that um, John Green is very um, famous for. He likes some selection of favorite hymns from our congregation and he will play a medley of those hymns during the offertory. Something we've not seen in our church. And um, I believe I'm gonna go around and get some hymns from you. Let's see if I can see a hand here. Oh, there's one, Doggy Foo. Dolly, would you like to tell us your hymn? Well, the hymn that I've chosen is hymn number 526, Because He Lives. Very favorite hymn, Because He Lives. 526. Do I see? Okay, I have Mandy Foo here. She with her favorite hymn. A be thou my vision, 507. 507. Shauna? Okay, Shauna, what is yours? Uh, 530 is well my soul. It is well with my soul, 530. Um, Sharon? Sharon? Hymn number 207, it may be at morn. All these are evergreens, it may be at morn. Israel, Israel, where are you? Israel? I like, draw me nearer, 306. Draw me nearer. In fact, we have a few more hands going up. And uh, do you think we can have two more? Depending on how much time we have. Okay, just one more. I read. Five or six. A mighty fortress is our Lord. Five or six. So we look forward to hearing all these during the offer tree. It is now time to quiet in our hearts and invite God into our midst. Shall we sing a song? But before we do this, we'll be um, inspired by Mr. John Green with a prelude.
We praise your holy name because you are the God who created music. And you recite in praise. Today, we want to harness the power of praise and music in our lives. We want to sing a new song to you because of our salvation experience. We want to think of all the good things you've done for us and all the trials that you have made us cool. As we worship you this morning, fill us with joy and power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hymn number 33 is our hymn of praise this morning. Hymn 33.
Let us kneel down to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence this morning, we'd like to praise you for your greatness, to thank you for your gift of blessing, also for the gift of pain that sometimes we have to endure each and every day. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your forgiveness. For each one of us, you know that we are still human, we make mistakes, but yet as a loving Father, you always dare to forgive us. Father, we like to pray for our brothers and sisters, our relatives, our parents, our family, which in the church today, or maybe somewhere outside of our church. We like to pray for them. We like to ask for your guidance about them. So in everything that we do, you know that we love them, and we know also that you love them. Father, we would like to ask for our need. There are plenty of needs. Some of us might need strength for now. Some of us might need help in financial right now. Some of us might, might need comfort. Some of us might need power from heaven. For whatever needs that we have, we would like to surrender it into your hands. Knowing as a loving Father, you will provide it for us. Father, we would like to ask for your guidance as well in our life. When we face difficulties, when we face questions, when we ask for your will, help us to see through the life that we have. So in everything we do, we always believe that you always be with us in everything. At the end of this prayer, Father, we would like to commit our life against you. To say that we are your children, we are your son and we are your daughter. And as we are, your children, help us to always love you because you love us. This is our prayer for today. Thank you for being with us. We pray in Jesus' precious name.
an analyst found out that if Earth's population was shrunken into a village of just 100 people, with all the human ratios existing in the world still remaining then, 57 of the 100 would be Asian, 52 would be female, 70 would be non-white, 30 would be Christian, 80 would live in substandard housing, 70 would be unable to read, 50 would suffer from malnutrition, 1 would be near death. So do you know how blessed we are? Let's think of it this way. If you wake up this morning with more health than illness, you are more fortunate than a million who will not survive this week. If you have never experienced the danger of battle, the loneliness of imprisonment, the agony of torture, or the pangs of starvation, you are ahead of 500 million people in the world. If you are able to read, you are more blessed than over 2 billion people in the world that cannot read at all. If you can attend a church meeting, like what we're doing now, without fear of harassment, arrest, torture or death, you are fortunate more than 3 billion people in the world can't. If you have food in the fridge, clothes on your back, a roof overhead, and a place to sleep, you are richer than 75% of this world. If you have money in the bank, no doubt this Saturday is probably a smaller sum, in a wallet, and spare change in a dish somewhere, you are among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. If you can hold up your head with a smile on your face, and are truly thankful, you are blessed because the majority can, but most do not. Like you, I'm blessed. And I thank God for the opportunity to share the blessings. But the deacons, please stand for prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for many blessings. Thank you that we can attend church without fear of harassment. Thank you that we have food to eat, clothes to wear, a place to sleep, and the ability to read. Most of all, we thank you that even in these difficult times, we need not be afraid because we have Jesus. And when we have Jesus, we have everything. Dear God, we pray that the blessing, the offering collected, will go very far to bring Jesus to 70% of the world who needs to know him. Thank you in your name we pray.